Um, the reason I've named the book as uh, Chinatown, um, I have said it in the post or the script, that um, initially I couldn't find what's the uh, main um, subject or thing of this book. That's why, although I met those people two years ago before I was writing it, and then for in the past two years I couldn't uh, have written it just because I couldn't find a line or the storyline or whatever you call the thing to write about it. And uh, uh, the reason I write about it is because I met the Amazon's um, uh, CEO in China um, for the London Book Affair and um, we had dinner in uh, Leicester Square, just uh, one street next to the uh, Chinatown. Um, so during the dinner I was talking about this topic and then it seems that he couldn't understand what I was talking about those characters or at that time it's not characters, it's j just my friends. Um, it seems that he couldn't understand my friend. So he couldn't understand why they're living here illegally and even being a prostitute just for surviving, uh, rather than just going back home and they have the parents, they have the family, they have the proper job, everything decent. Um, why would they survive here rather than in China? They could live uh, properly well. And uh, I feel that if I ex uh, if I ex want to explain the whole thing to him, that would be quite a huge. A topic to talk about. So I had to stop at the dinner eventually. And then when I came back home, then I start to think, okay, it seems that in the mainstream society, there's a lot of misunderstanding or they couldn't understand at all for those kind of illegal group of people, which I didn't realize at that time. I mean, before that dinner. And then after that dinner, I realized it's, it is an issue. It is a problem that I may need to explain to them. And how do I explain to those people? The best way is just I write down their fictions or whatever. I write down those stories as a fiction. Then people may understand, oh, I say that's why they'd rather living here in London or in, in overseas, not there in their homeland. Having this kind of very sad life, but they're still keen to live in this way rather than living in their hometown happily in uh, mainstream society's views. So. For that reason, I start to think of a structure, this uh, book, this novel. But at the beginning, there's just a random, uh, there's, there's about 20 or 30 characters or uh, people from the reality I have known. Um, they, they initially, there were about 30 people. So I made a list of all each people in the reality I know I, and I met and uh, I know all of them, their stories. Maybe it's just A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but they all have different stories and different um, aspects of views of life and uh, everything. And they all have different backgrounds. So from those 30 characters now, I have to garden up, for example, combine A and B together, or I just delete C, and then I may enlarge the D um, and by fulfilling other stories into his story. So by doing that, uh, finally, I think after that, uh, my list uh, um, was shortened to about 15 characters. And finally, when you read this book, there's about 12 or 13 characters as a main story and the main characters, apart from the, the supporting roles, the, the few supporting roles as well. Um, so finally, there's about 15 characters. Then for those 15 characters and their stories, I begin to think, okay, so how could I combine them all together as one book, as one story, rather than 15 short stories and they're all separated, they're not they are not knowing each other for sure, but I, I need to make them know each other um, in some kind of way. Anyway, I just need to find the link to link all those 15 characters, fictional or reality or whatever. I just want to link them all together like the necklace. There are 15 pearls and I need to link them together with a single line. So what is the line? What's the storyline I was thinking about? I was thinking about for about two, three days and three days later, my friend, the Amazon uh, Chinese Zoom CEO, um, he finished the London Book Fair already and uh, he's going to leave. So he gave me a call when he was in his, his airport he, and he said, uh, how, how about uh, your writing? I remember you told me last time you want to write a book about it. I said, yes, I'm still struggling to think. You know, I, I still couldn't find that line. And he said, why don't you just start, start writing? Maybe the line will appear itself. I said, no, 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 wait. I think I need to... 
I need to think about carefully before I write it. I need to figure out how could I connect all those characters characters together. Then I could start right. Then he said, "Okay, I I'm looking forward to reading it." <laughs> he said that in two thousand five. Um, and then finally, when this book was writing and published in China properly, it was 2015. That's 10 years later, exactly. But I think both of them, both of he and me, we never realized it would took such a long time for 10 years to produce a book. Even though I wrote it in 2005, this book, but it couldn't be released or published in China for some reason. I don't know, maybe because I just、uh, been too lazy to find a publisher, and also. Another main reason is that Chinese publishers they don't think this is a serious problem. They don't see the value of this fiction at all, as we English will do.、Um, I'm not talking about I'm English. I just say usually in England, maybe they are more interested in this subject rather than Chinese, because at that time, you know, the Chinese main society, those publishers, those ones who live on the top range of the society, they can never imagine what important it is. About the illegal immigrations, what's the matter to do with them? They don't see any point of me writing it. Even now, maybe they will start to realize. Yes, there are such kind of people living there, but they never be aware of it before. So, I would say、uh, happily. Then finally, one day,、um, I found the line, the link, the thing. The 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 thing will 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 connect all those fifty fifteen、uh, fictional or、uh, non fictional characters. That's Chinatown. That's Chinatown. So basically, I invented the Chinatown in this book. The Chinatown was never existing in this book, but I invented as a Chinatown. And in this Chinatown, completely fictitious Chinatown, there are fifteen characters. From all sides of London, all part of this society, they live in this fictitious Chinatown. However, there's another world of Chinatown, which we all know is like a tourist point,、uh, the Chinatown next to the next Leicester Square in central London. That's a offi- that's an official name of Chinatown. That's、uh, exactly Chinatown in our reality. However, there's another Chinatown which is completely fictional, fictitious. That's inside my book, and all my all, all of my characters living in this non-existing fictitious Chinatown, even though all their life and all their stories are true. So, you say you set up a, you give them a set up a, a world, but this world is completely fictional. But how do you think? Is it because you want to live in this Chinatown? Chinatown 里面，你觉得这个是谁的世界？这个是你心中的一个 Chinatown 的图景吗 ？This no such thing called Chinatown. OK， 就你作为一个留学生，你到了伦敦之后，你是觉得 The Caesar Square 这个 Chinatown 不是你心中你的 image 的 community of China， 所以你又想象出来了一个吗？ No. 我怎么回答你的问题？我得把你的问题说在我的话里面，对吧？嗯，嗯、um, ，OK。I came to the UK, uh, in London in 2002, and of course, as all Chinese would do, the first、uh, probably tourist point we will go to is Chinatown and the Trafalgar Square and Leicester Square, all those points. And、uh, when I go, when I firstly went to Chinatown in 2002, the first one, so first week of、uh, me、uh, being in London. I went to Chinatown and I saw all those Chinese restaurants. It's kind of tricky fitting, you know. It's quite、um, how to say that. It's quite tricky because clearly you know this is not in China, but all these Chinese symbols are there. They have the they have the Chinese restaurant restaurants. They have all the Chinese characters on the title and the advertisement board, and everyone working on this street. Some of them are tourists,、uh, and some of them are English, and、uh, most of them are Chinese. So you wouldn't tell much difference. Of course, there's still some difference. Of course, for example, the、uh, architecture, the building style, everything is still British. But all those restaurants, Chinese restaurant, and all those pa- passengers,、um, the, those Chinese people working、uh, walking the, along the street, 
You can tell it's still part of China. You can you cannot say much difference between them. And when they, when you actually get into a Chinese supermarket or you get into a Chinese、uh, restaurant and you sit down and having a meal, everything is the same. It's there's no no much difference between the Chinese restaurant in London and the Chinese restaurant in China. Well, maybe there's some taste differently, but still not much difference. We could say. So it's quite a kind of um, um, how to say that kind of、uh, you you would find it、um, fresh. You would find it、um, excited, and you would find it、um, something、um, vivid and、uh, recall your home sick.、Uh, all those kind of mind telling, but. It is Chinatown, but it's not China. We all know that. Everyone knows that. So it is a real Chinatown, but it is not a real thing of China. It is exactly a real thing of China, but it is not the real thing in China. I hope you understand this paradox. And、um, so, even though this Chinatown is officially called Chinatown, it's not really Chinatown. It's not really China. It's the, the imagination of our all our Chinese people and all overseas people. We imagined it as a China, as a Chinatown, as a part of China. So it's completely an imaginary community. That's in the well. We know it's、um, as a lit, one of the literary series.、Eh? So Chinatown is the best example of that. Now, that's the first impression Chinatown gave to me when I was just a, a student and、um, I was a tourist as well. And I, a first week come over to London. That's the same I have thing. So it's apart from I feel oh everything here is from China. That's so so good. So I can have Chinese food and I could meet Chinese people even in London. That's quite exciting. But apart from that, nothing more, nothing much more because I only left China for about one week. There's not not much、uh, difference I would tell at that point. However, one year later, when I was trying to.、Uh, Finish my degree and writing my、uh, dissertation, and I went back to London.、Uh, try to find a property or find a room to to live, so that I can finish my uh, study um, in London. And then I met those、uh, illegal people、uh, by chance, just a completely、uh, coincidence that I, I I became one of them. I became that became my、uh, housemates, and I I live with them every day. Day and night, we talk. We are friends. We eat together. We sleep or or in the same house. We use the kitchen and bathroom、um, in the same house. So twenty four hours I was with them. I never imagined I would live with them.、Um, as I said in this、uh, novel, I, I wrote the everything in detail how I meet those people and how、uh, I end up living with them. I never thought it would happen. However, it just happened. So. At that point, I still never thought I would write a fiction about them one day. Until in two thousand five, two years later, as I said, I、uh, had a long,、uh, had a dinner with my friend, and then suddenly it inspired me that it tells me that I need to say something about them because、um, clearly, everyone in the modern society they don't understand them. They never understand they are living here with us. Because they are not existing, they are not existing in our society. They are not existing in our mainstream at all. Media, social, everything in any kind of respect, they are not existing at all. But they are here. So I think I need to write about them. I need to make people be aware that they are here. They are alive. They are living with us. They are part of us. They are part of our society, even though they were never being accepted and recognized by our society. So now, get into my book. Is this Chinatown fiction? Fictional, yes. Is this Chinatown fictitious? Yes. But are those characters all fictional? Partly, not really. They are all very, very Jenny. People I have met and I have experienced. That's why I could have collected so many stories of him, them. That's why I could know them in depths because I had personal contact with them. And how the, the the only thing is, how could I make all those people in the reality become a fictional 
characters, and that's the writer's job. That's what I have done in the whole process. However, as I said, to create this book, I need to find a link between all those different characters, and that link is Chinatown. So, in that sense, yes, the Chinatown in this book was invented by me. It was created by me. It was a purely fiction. However, in another way, this so-called fictional Chinatown is a real Chinatown. It is a real Chinatown in our society, in our reality, rather than the fictional fake Chinatown or fictional Chinatown in China in London. So my yep. opinion is because yep. I feel the Chinatown you write about is just like a part of the of the uh, not the physical Chinatown, mm -hmm. just the literal Chinatown. Yep. It yep. is just a part of it. Like Chinatown does not only have the illegal people; they mm -hmm. also has different walks of life. I understand. So in reality, Chinatown. Not only have the illegal people, but also have the legal people. For example, the Chinese students and those Chinese、um, employees working in British companies. Yes, that's fifty-fifty. Let's say I don't know the population、um, exactly. I don't know those numbers. But yes, definitely, the part of legal Chinese people living in the UK and the part of illegal Chinese people living in the UK. And the Chinatown I was writing about was、uh, writing about was、uh, completely illegal people. Apart from me, I'm the only legal people there. <laughs> okay, so I'm the only one、uh, existing in this world, and all the rest of fifteen or thirty characters are not existing at all. They're all fictional in our reality. That's quite tricky. That's another thing I want to、um, press here. And、uh, so, yes, in reality, the Chinatown should have all those、um, legal and illegal people all together. However, as I said, the link or the thing of my book or of this fiction. It's illegal people, and、uh, so maybe yes. I'm I'm writing a Chinatown about those I illegal imi、uh, immigrations, but the some part of this、uh, Chinatown maybe I was missing is about the legal people. But as I said, because the thing of this book or of this story or this fiction was those illegal people, that's why I didn't put the other people in. Maybe they will have other stories. All those legal people, those people who working in the British company or something, or the students or the mainstream Chinese or very successful, for example,、um, the entrepreneur of this country. There are quite a lot of Chinese as well. So the story is not about them because we can all see them. So the same I was trying to write is under the city, underground. Those people we could not find out, we could not see, and that's the thing about this book. That's why, yes, maybe I just wrote part of the Chinatown. So my curiosity is why you title this story of the fifteen characters with the name of Chinatown instead of like the invisible, the invisible people in Chinatown or the people I. You you don't usually meet in Chinatown like this, but you you use the more general word Chinatown. That's my question. Okay, that's a good question because、uh, um, usually before I read this book, okay, let's say, usually when you mention Chinatown in London or in America or anywhere worldwide, usually when you mention this word, how many percentage of people will be thinking of?、Uh, There are some illegal people there. I would say probably ninety percent of people were never being aware of this some illegal population inside this society.、Uh, no, I I feel most people nowadays there are illegal people living in London. Yeah, they they are aware of that, but maybe they have little touch with them, but they are aware of that. I, okay. But when I say a Chinatown word to you, would you think of them? Oh, do I say again? If I say, okay, let's go to Chinatown, what would you think? Shopping, restaurants, eating,、yeah. meeting. Yeah. Is there any any little thing about those illegal people? Maybe don't go to Chinatown at night because they're they're 
this may be very dangerous. Maybe. Yeah, that's a film. That's a American Hollywood film. I will tell you. But when I mention a Chinatown word to you or to anyone, would any of them? I would say probably less than ten percent would be thinking of illegal people. Everybody will be thinking about about everything on the surface. Everything we could have seen is、uh, all those illegal people, all those、uh, Chinese restaurants, all those people on the street is illegal. We are assuming they're illegal. Maybe they're not. We don't know. We never check their identity. So let's say if I go to America or if I go to Paris, and I said, "Okay, let's go to Chinatown." Would you think of anything of illegal people? No, I don't think so. So why I'm in this? Maybe because of the Hollywood film of Chinatown, or maybe because of the media's report about Chinatown and everything. Um, when you Google the Chinatown word online, I don't think you will see anything illegal there. Everything comes out from the media, from the, from people's mouths, or from from people's thinking of imagination of Chinatown. Everything I assuming or I believe is most of them will be thinking of those legal terms only. However, the illegal side they may be aware of it, but the only chance they would think or read about this illegal immigrant news is when there's some tragedy happens. For example. Um, in two thousand three or two thousand five, I cannot remember. In the Dover、um, Harbor, there's a very sad tragedy. A lot of pe- Chinese people died, and they're all illegal. They went there by paying lots of money,、um, tens of thousands of dollars or, or pounds, just to get into、um, the country. But they, they tragically died. So we we. We only can read those kind of news when there's something bad thing, really, really sad things happened, and it will be revealed. However, that's just very, very little amount, very small portion of those illegal immigrants' lives because you, the one you have seen is the one you ha- they have died, and the thousands of hundreds of them, they, they, they actually succeed. They, they came over to this country and they live here, but nobody could never see him. So that's the same I want to write about because、um, the so mysterious or very interesting. Yes, that is interesting. But maybe as I I feel that many of the people、mm-hmm. do you think they want to be be exposed in the general the the mass communication、uh, in front of the audience. I don't think any of them would be. Um, like to be exposed in any kind of way in the public, unless they got their identity. But even if they got their identity, I mean, for example, the the permanent residence or green card or whatever, if they got it, they don't want to admit they were get into this country initially by this way. Nobody wants to. That's why it has to be a fiction. It cannot be a documentary, or、oh, it's. It would be so difficult for for film filming a documentary about them. You couldn't find them at all, and they may refuse for it. And so, I mean, that's the same. That's what literature do. We do write about things that are not existing or the supposed not to be exploited. That's what we do. But by working out that, it requires a lot of、um, work and it requires a lot of chances as well, because not many people have the chance to get in touch with them. And I was,、um, it just happened that I was a lucky one. But、um, um, to meet those people is not the only lucky part I had. The another lucky part I had is,、uh, um, it, I wrote them, and I wrote them down. Um, I didn't imagine I would、uh, have written them, writing them down myself, even, but it just、uh, happened. And I wrote it ten, now twelve years ago. It was a book I wrote twelve years ago. But as I said, it was so difficult to get published. That's why it was just released、uh, recently. And because the main society just thought those people are not important, those people are not existing. Why would we bother to write, even write about them? 刚刚想到一个问题，就是有关纪录片，就是我想，我想就是你可以说说小说是怎么可以展现现实这个主题。那我的问题可能抛出来就是，相比纪录片，纪录片是很真实的，大家都知道。但小说的话，大家知道它是虚构的，所以你如何通过一个虚构的东西去展示一个真实的东西？嗯嗯嗯，这个方面。好 ，OK。Um, so now the question backs to the fiction and the reality. Or we say the truth and the false. 
Um, that's um, that's always very uh, that's always a very very interesting question. Whatever in terms of documentary, in terms of uh, film or television soaps, or in terms of fiction or、uh, nonfiction, there's always a one question: Is the story you write or you talk about true or false? Is your imagination or fiction or is nonfiction? If it's nonfiction, we need proof. We need evidence to say if it's really happened, and that's, for example, let's say the news report or the documentary film. Then we need that evidence. It's truly happened. It's a true event, or it's completely your imagination, your create creation. This question always lies in all kinds of、uh, format of arts, because artists are supposed to create a sims which is not existing, which is not true. That's why, for example, when you are seeing a film, definitely is a creation. When you read a fiction book, a novel, it's definitely a creation. However, this is a boundary. It's a very tricky boundary in between the reality and the creation, because all the writers and all the artists were trying to do is trying to blur this boundary. Is trying to make people think their creation or their creative work is true. And now. Everyone was aiming to do that because no one wants to write a novel and say people won't read it. Oh, it's completely fake. It's not possible. It's a false. Nobody wants that. So am I. So for me, the difficulty is double. It's not the difficulty. Not only lies in how I convert all those truly happening reality stories into a fiction. That's one. That's quite difficult. Trust me. And the second difficulty is how could I create a fictional story and make it as true as what happens in the reality life? So that's in two ways I have to do for writing this book. I got all those materials. As I said, I was lucky because most people, most writers or documentary film director or whoever, they cannot even get those material. I was lucky. I got all those material. Now I need to. Reproduce all those material into a fiction, into a non-existing story that never happened before. However, I need to make this fictional story to be as true as it could be. I remember when I was、um, writing.、Um, In my early stage, when I was a teenager, I started to write novels, and I remember I read a line.、Um, someone was saying that what's the difference between the fiction, the novels, and the reality is, I think that's quite good、uh, clue. That、uh, I, I cannot remember who said it. I'm sorry, but、uh, I read definitely in Chinese.、Um, it says that the difference is, novel or fiction is what could have happened in the past. Sorry, say it again. Fiction or novel is what could have happened in that location, in that time, in that place with those people, but it didn't happen. And documentary or nonfiction is what exactly happened on that occasion. So that defines the difference. So I was always using that line to tell myself, okay, so this is purely a fiction because. Most of those things I wrote in Chinatown didn't really happen. It didn't really happen. Or, for example, let's take the prostitute Abel story. Well, probably only a few elements, a few very key points are very true that I'm sure it was happened. But all those plots, all those stories I created. The person has a. Has her a real sample in reality, and all those very crucial, vital point of his her life turning points. That's what he told me about it. But he, of course, she wouldn't tell me what dialogue she had and what happened with her and her first boyfriend and why、um, the broke up,、uh, blah blah blah, and so many. All those details, I have to do it all myself. So it's like taking that as example. It's like the storyline. We have the storyline scheduled, and then, but I only know a few. Let's say five or six key points of the, all those story. I only know those key points to make 
about from the Chinese uh, students is start students studying in the UK became a prostitute in Chinatown. Okay, so the five let's say the five key points, and I know the five key points what exactly happened, but I don't know the dialogue, I don't know the characters, I don't know all the supporting、um, side stories and everything. So I, what I need to do is I get these five points, but I fulfill all the fictional things in between those five points and make it a whole story. And I need to, I actually quite keen to、um, say one thing that most people, most readers, after read、um, Abel's story, they always question me, and they couldn't believe that. Said, "Is that point true?" Because they, they thought it's impossible. What it is? If you have read、uh, read about China, then you would know what I'm talking about. It's about her. She witnessed by accident. She witnessed that her boyfriend was giving her mother, his mother, sorry, that she about witnessed her boyfriend was giving his mother a blowjob. Everybody thought it's fiction. Everybody told me it's impossible, and I have to say to them, I'm so sorry. That's that's true because the reason I cannot make it more look like reality is because that's exactly true. That's what Abel told me by herself. It's definitely one hundred percent true, and that was the only reason I couldn't fiction it, because that's a key point. It caused all tragedy happened to her afterwards. It caused her tr-、um, completely lost confidence and trust trust in the, for 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 her whole life about love and relationships and marriage. Everything it destroyed her on, on that point. It has to be like that because without such kind of thing, she will she she will never become a prostitute. She will still have hope of love. She will still have hope of a boyfriend and relationship, and still hope to have a happy marriage. It destroyed her completely because of that, and it's a true fact. That's the same. I really cannot fiction. And sadly, I. You know what? If I were to create the story myself, I wouldn't make that, because it's just too. Impossible. We everyone thought no, it's impossible. But I'm so sorry. It's reality. The reality is so crucial. We just have to accept it. And the reason I cannot change that point is because, as I said, that point changed her whole life afterwards. So it has to be like that. So you want to show the crucial reasons that lead this character become the prostitute. I have to, I just have to, because I couldn't find any other way or any other fake reason, false reason, creative imagination reason to make her become a prostitute. It's just one part of the reason that she became a prostitute after that, but it's the most important one, I would say. As I said, because of that, she can never trust any man anymore. She can never trust the real love, like the fairy tale story. It's not existing. The the same, the reality same she witnessed by her own eyes is so so tragic and so crucial. That's a lesson, as a kind of adult lesson, the life gave to her. Unfortunately, no one wants that. Imagine that if I were nineteen or eighteen years old, I was in my first love. I was so happy with my fairy tale boyfriend, and everything was so happy. When I witnessed that, what can I do? I will be totally destroyed as well. And the the worst thing is that the destroy is nothing to do with this particular relationship anymore. It's about my confidence on man, my、uh, confidence, my relationships, my love. By love and my confidence on marriage, because she witnessed his unhappy mother was doing like this most ugly thing in the world. We none of us could have imagined that. Why would she do that? She's not a widow. She is in a marriage, and she's she married a rich man in China. She never lack of any money, and she stays in a happy marriage in social society's、uh, way. She has a rich husband. And she has a、um, very healthy and a very handsome and tall、uh, a young son. Everything is magic. This fairy tale. 
I mean, his mother, her boyfriend's mother, got everything in life that the men's society would be thinking. Oh, she's a lucky woman. She's a happy woman. But indeed, she's not. She's not. She's terrible. She lives in a terrible life. I mean, it's her fault, but it's not only her fault. How could her his mother become that kind of mother? If you dig inside that, it's unhappy marriage, and why this unhappy marriage was caused, and why she would do that with his own son, her own son, it's completely madness. It's psycho. But how could this psycho could happen? If you look at all those backgrounds, and if you dig inside all those characters' possibilities, that's quite. That's quite another story already. I could have written a, a pure love novel just about her mother, his mother, but that's not my my job. My job is trying to focus on about why she became a prostitute one by one steps, and that's the most important the key point. And I couldn't re erase that. I couldn't delete that part. I couldn't lie to all my readers just to make this story seems to be more seems to be more reasonable or seems to be more、uh, believable or more like reality. Reality. I couldn't do that because it is what happened, and I couldn't change on this point. Very, very crucial, crucial point. So I have to keep it. And after that, of course, as other things happened, and one by one, so she became a prostitute. But as I said, partly it's her fault, but not all is her or her fault. It's、uh, just everything all add up together, and、um, sadly, it just happened to her. And、uh, trust me, everyone, every single character, has their storylines, and they have they have their logic of doing all kind of mad things, even mad things. As I said, even her boyfriend's mother, she did that for a reason. She became psycho for a reason, and that was the reason our artist or writer needs to find out. 是你不仅在展现这些已经 go people 的生活，你更加是展现了一个他们背后的驱使他们成为这样子人的一个社会情况。Yes, and、uh, as I said, if you that's 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 my understanding. If you want to make your character as true as in reality, you have to find out all everything in the background, what happened before that and after, because every character they just not they they're not existing just for this. One piece of paper, one piece of a story. They have their own history. They have their personal history. They have the background. They have the family and the、um, uh, relationship and、uh, emotional experience. Everything behind them. So it's not like the Hollywood film. Sometimes you just see a character. The only reason he appeared in this film was just to be killed. For example, just for two seconds and. In a novel writing or in a fictional writing, you cannot do that. You have to, if you want to make all your characters stand up as a character, as a real person, you have to find all the past and all the future. You have to give them a storyline and the logic to become today. Should the before and after based from the actuality, or it could be just a generalized imagination? Um, technically, for writing. You have to do that、um, as a writing. If it's a purely a fictional um, um, character, that's for me. That's how I work. But、um, take this example. Abel, he got、uh, she got a real example sample from the reality life. So I took, as I said, I took those five key points to create this story and to create her life. But、um, in any way. Whether your material was from the reality or you completely fic, uh, uh, writing a fiction, still that's what I'm talking about. If you want your character to be stand up as as a real person, you have to construct her with her bones, with her muscle, blood, mind, heart, organs, everything, everything. Otherwise, it will be a paper. It will be a piece of paper. It's not a character. It's a fake one. So that's why lots of my readers, after reading my novels, always think, "Oh, this must be a real man. This must be a real woman." They don't believe it's all fictional, because I did all the work. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So, how do I collect all my stories, all my materials? Um, I think um for all writers, if you want to be a writer, the first thing is you need to collect all the materials. 
Some writers, they do write based on their own experience, the experience of the past, uh, their own childhood experience or everything. And um, I could have done that as well. But my way is more naturally that I collect all the stories while I'm growing up and I'm living. So that's the way I collect all the stories. But I never mean to um, do that with some kind of purpose of writing a novel. I never do that. So this is some difference. I don't do like, I want to write a novel, then I go to live with them and I collect all the material. No, I never do that. Okay? So what I do is, I just live naturally. And see what happens. Whatever the life brings to me, I'll remember it. Okay, I'll, I'll get it. But I never have any purpose to use them one day. Until one day, then suddenly there's some point, which I will call it as a spirit. For other writers, it's not a spirit. For me, only one day when I met some kind of point as my spirit, then I was like, okay, I need to write this down. I need to... Spirit? Spirit, Lingan. Inspiration. Inspiration, sorry, I used the wrong word. Okay. Uh, now what is from uh, okay, what is from Okay. Until I I will only write it as a kind of work of fiction or whatever. Until one day the inspiration comes out. Maybe to other people or other writers it's not called inspiration because for them the material itself is a kind of inspiration, but for me it's different. I got all the material already in my past whatever lives. But I need some point. It's like a box. I gathered all this, all my past experience and life into a box. And I need the key. So my inspiration is not the box at all. Because it's always there in my heart, in my memory. But I need a key. As long as one day, suddenly I got one inspira inspiration or the key. Then the box will be open. Then I will say, okay, what's inside? I need to find this and this and this. Okay, this will be the work for me. And I put it aside. Then I start to structure the, the, the work I'm going to write. But as I said, the inspiration is more far more important to me because it's not often I could get it. I, I have to wait for the muse. Otherwise, I just couldn't write. Even though all the material is there in my box and it's a plenty of them. Sometimes I even forget because it's too much. And I never write them down because I believe if something is important, I will always remember it. If something is not that important, then I'll just forget it. So there's no point that I write down every day of my life. There's no point of that. But when one day, when I want to write about something, about, um, for example, this or that, then I will try to recall all my memories. And now it comes to another question. We all know that when you're getting older, you've got more experience and you've got more um, materials, of course. So how could you write as a young writer? Let's say I started my creative writing when I was five, uh, I write poems. And then I start to write short stories when I was 11 or 12. And I start to write my first novel when I was 14. At that age, say when I was five, 12 and 14, how could I get that much experience to write a novel? I'm just a teenager, I know nothing. I even don't even know, don't know all the Chinese characters how to write yet. So how could I get all this experience? That's another thing. For all those young writers, I would say, don't worry. You have the best thing that I don't have right now, even though now I got all the material, all my experience, and all, all the skills on how to write. But you have one thing that I don't have right now, passion. You have passion. So even though your material is poor, your experience is less, uh, less uh, than us, but you have passion. You have your love. You have the passion of everything includes writing. You have passion of love. You have the natural born things. So don't worry about it. If I can start to write a novel or fiction when I was 12, you can do as well. It's all about if you want it. If you want it, you will have it. But your reader um, feel your passion. When you think you so? The, the young reader, when you, when you are young, young writer. What do you mean? When you are, when yeah. you are uh, a young writer, uh -huh. do you think your readers could feel your passion? I think so. Actually, I think um, if you read my another novel, The Personal Statement, 
I wrote it uh, when I was 23 years old and I just graduated from the university not having much uh, experience on the society at all but I wrote a novel about the, the whole Beijing's um, circuit, um, the society in that book so all kinds of people all kinds of uh, level of the society I wrote all those characters in that novel uh, it's called personal statement I wrote it when I was 23 but you know what now I'm 40 I couldn't write that book now even though all those memories and all those events still here I still remember them all but if you ask me if you destroy that book and ask me to write that again I couldn't do it now that's the difference because I have passion at that time I have the passion to write down all those stories that happened around me and in Beijing at that time. I had all those experiences. It's not perfect experience, but I have the passion to write them down in that way. But now I'm 40. Those, those stories and those experiences, I still have it, but I can never write it down again because I, I lost my passion. But the advantage of the older writer, I would say, the best, usually, the best work was always written when you are very mature, when you are getting older. Why is that? Because you've got more materials and you've got more skills and technically you, you know how to create a no, uh, very good novel. And uh, we all know all those masterpieces and all those classic um, uh, novels or dramas, everything was writing after the author was 30 or 40, I would say. So that's the same. Even though the young writers have a passion that we older writers don't have right now, but the young writers have, don't have one thing that the older writers have. What is that? It's your thoughts, your mind, your, the deeps of your understanding of the humanity and society. That requires time. When you were young, you don't have that much experience. You don't know what these people is thinking, that people is thinking. You don't know what is happening in this world. You don't know all this political movement because you have never experienced it before and you don't know how to react on it. But when you are getting older, you have experienced enough, enough, you know how to handle it. And you can see through all the things. You can see through all the society and every single person in deeps. Because you know how to read the people. And you have experience how to react during all those um, political movements and everything. You have your own mind already and you're independent, completely independent thought adult already. So that's the advantage older people would have. But yes, of course, I agree. Not everyone can be a writer. <laughs> you have to. You have to be having that kind of talent and plus you're working hard plus some kind of training um unconsciously or consciously but um it just um it, trust me if you're a talent writer you will show up don't worry about it you are, if you're not you will never so just give up but as this, what do you really do when you are not writing that's the same. That's that's why I came to England. Actually, the reason I came to England is because um, I don't want to live in the writer's life. Because before I came over here, I was twenty five, and in China, I published five books already, and I was interviewed by the CCTV, the the uh, Chinese the Central National Television program as the youngest uh, talent talented writer. So I got everything most writers would dream of already, but in Beijing. I have a very good life. I work as a journalist um, in a magazine and also in t TV station. And everything, everything I had in Beijing was everyone would dream of. So why I came to the UK? Because I wanted something different. I don't want to be that kind of person in that society. Or in short, I don't want to be a writer in the society. I want to be a nobody. I want to be someone nobody knows who I am. That's what, exactly why I'm here. <laughs> That's why I'm so happy living here just as Juliet because nobody knows my pen name in China and nobody knows I have published so many books in China. I think about nine or ten right now. And so I enjoy my freedom of life. It's like when I was in China, everyone knows you are a writer or everyone knows you are a journalist. And then for me, I couldn't get an ordinary life. I could, yeah, I, I was in the ordinary life as a writer or journalist in China, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted total ordinary life that nobody knows who I am. So I'm just a girl called Juliet. When I was 20 or 25 or 30 or whatever, I'm just me. 
and nobody knows I'm writing, and nobody knows I'm journalist even, because journalist is still kind of you know part of writer of writer's work. So yeah, I want to be completely estranged from、um, that kind of writer's life. So that's why I'm here in London. Nobody knows me. That's perfect. Awesome. Is it you are enjoying an exotic life? Exotic. Um. Exotic. What? Today, show it. 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 就一个，就是收集材料的一个方式。对 ，Yes， maybe， yeah， maybe that was a way how I collect， uh， collect all my materials。Okay， 嗯，我应该仰头还是低头？低头是吧？仰头精神一点，低头显得小。低头但是容易那个什么呀？向下吧。这样可以吗？这样挺好的，这样挺好的。Um, yes, I think the way I collect all my、uh, materials、um, in the Pandora's box、um, is just to be a nobody. Nobody knows me. Then they will never know that you are going to write about something, about what's happening right now. Let's say, for example, if I'm dating a man, the simplest way. If I if I'm dating a man, I tell him, okay, darling, I'm going to write about our romance. I will be completely scared away. No way. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the same, but if I'm just sitting on my side, hey, I'm Juliet. I'm just a student coming from China. No, okay, that's fine. Yeah, then we'll have a proper romance. You see, that's the same. That's the same thing. But it's not really that I will write down all my romantic stories or the the the, the one I loved before or whatever. It's not really like that. I do write some love stories, and part of the, those stories are based on my true experience. But not really. But actually, you reminded me, and、uh, I once had a very fun conversation with one of my ex-boyfriends, because I always tell tell my、um, ex-boyfriends、uh, after we broke up. I always tell them my real identity because we we broke up already. We broke up already, and I know it's nothing is going to happen. So I always tell them afterwards, not beforehand, or even when I was in love with them. No, no, I never tell them. So once time, um. I broke up with one of my ex-boyfriends. Then I told him we're friends now, of course. Then I told him I said actually I write stories, I write fictions, and、uh, he said oh really? And he said yes. And actually I published some in China too. And he was so amazed, you know. He was so he was so surprised. And actually, that's that's one example I would say because it's just so funny. And then I think about a few months later, I got a, a new book published in China called London Love Story. So I told him about this news because we broke up already. We are pretty friends now. So I told him about this story. I said, "Hey, do you know? I, I, you know actually, a few months later, I will have a new、uh, fiction published in China. It's called London Love Story." He was so excited. Then he asked me, "Is that a story about me?" <laughs> One, I wouldn't be able to write a novel in that short time, and two, even if I write that in that short time, I couldn't get published so soon. I said, "It's definitely not your story. It's another story." And then he was curious. He said, "If it's not my story, whose story is that?" Then I told him. I said, "Okay, it was about three years ago. I was dating a man. Yeah. So basically, this book is about a story happened three years ago." Then he started to be more curious, and he said. So in the past three years, how many bo-、uh, boyfriend you had? And I was trying to calculate. I said, oh, probably two or three or four. I'm not sure. Then he's English, okay? He's English. But the funny thing is, the last thing he was joking, of course I know. The next thing he was said, oh, you're such a slut. <laughs> Laughing, I know he was joking, but still, I just thought it's so so funny. You understand? Because that's some moments when the fictional world and the reality world were combined and joined together. It's just so much fun. It's just so much fun, but it's not、uh, happening all the time. It's just one case, and that's that's why I still remember right now. It's just so funny. Yeah, but.、Uh, 
as I said, that's a way how I collect my materials uh, to write a novel because I want to be a nobody and nobody notice me. So I will be the ordinary people and people will treat me as ordinary people. That's a life, exactly the life I want. Um, the reason I choose um, to live overseas rather than in China is not only about the um, um, is 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 exotic. It's not only about the exotic way. It's also um, about when I could learn. Um, I could learning all those cultural uh, difference uh, between whatever America or UK or China or whatever. Whenever you go to a new country, you will learn the con uh, country's culture. Uh, that's the kind of thing I want to learn. And the two is um, it's kind of uh, you know um, it's strange. You you line up the distance between your personality and the real life, and then you can observe things in a different uh, different angle and a, a view. So that's quite a kind of a thing uh, all writers would love to have as well. And uh, another reason, as I said, is because in social way, uh, that's the only way I can pretend to be a nobody, because in China everyone knows me, so I couldn't get much much for example i can never meet all those illegal people oh there's no illegal people in china anyway but i that, that's just example if i were in china i couldn't meet those people at all how could i i was not um, in that society so how could i meet them so it could be quite difficult for me to drag more stories like this uh, but in england uh, it's completely free i can do whatever i want i can be anyone i like to be so kind of very interesting life here. You mean that you want to collect the materials through the process of um, being a nobody? Okay, when you become a nobody or a stranger in this society and then nobody knows who, who you are or what you are doing, then you can do whatever you want. You can collect all the materials as, as you like and uh, it's more convenient. Or as Benjamin said, it's more like a city flat, flatter. Planner, yeah, city planner, yeah. So because nobody will notice you, you are invisible. If you're invisible in this society, you can get whatever you want. So it's like a kind of invisible coat you wear if you are living in the foreign land. For me, it's quite useful. And I know there's a lot of uh, uh, foreign writers living in other countries um, in the history. There's quite a lot, but I guess. Um, I guess not many of them. At, as far as I know, I, I don't know anyone who is acting like what I do, that I completely buried my pen name in this country, that even nobody knows I'm writing at all, and even nobody knows me, um, my name knows any of uh, my other names rather than Juliet. Even Juliet is a fictional. So I'm a fictional character here. It's, I'm not existing. <laughs> <laughs> Juliet is here existing, but the real me is not existing in this country. That's how. It's quite tricky. Yeah, I know. It's fun, but that's a fun part. I love it. So, where, where is the real you? The real me is in my book. The real you is in your book. The real me is in my book, yes. And uh, in the reality, the character I'm creating is myself, Juliet. So, the book is your image, the world of yourself. 是，就是书里面呢，就是你给你自己的一个世界。I presenting the real me in my fictional work. Pretending. Pretension. Uh, present. Presenting. Presenting. Present. Presentation. Present. Uh, present. Present. I present the real me in my fictional work, and uh, the 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 me or the way. I'm writing my novel is my reality. However, in the true reality, the Juliet is a creation, fictitious character that I created for my own mind. And I enjoy this kind of game. That's quite very funny. But I guess when people are watching this still documentary, I couldn't do that much more. <laughs> but still, yeah, I think the audience are limited. I still can play on. Mm. Why did you, uh, you know, why you uh, the reason I wanted to talk English is because uh, even though Chinese is my mother tongue language, but some kind of thing, it's quite weird that when I was writing this novel, even though I was writing it in Chinese, but you know, I was educated in, in, in the UK um, um, and then 
all those kind of illegal um, um, immigration things and also the literary th uh, theories such as uh, Sabato studies and so on and post-colonial studies and so on. All those literary terms are learned from English, uh, in England, from uh, in English t context. So even though I wrote this lo novel or fiction in Chinese, but actually the, the main spirit or the main thoughts behind this story and behind this fiction are all in, China, in English. So, um, and that was 10 years ago. Uh, that's why when I was uh, getting interviewed by the Chinese media, when I was talking about, even though I was talking in Chinese, but all, everything I was talking about is actually English culture, you understand? And it's English um, literary theory or the Western literary theory or the Western understanding of this kind of things. So it's quite tricky. I still regard myself as a Chinese, but uh, in some way, I think my my spirit or my thought was constructed by the Western culture and the Chinese culture all together. So I feel more comfortable to speak English when I was talking about this uh, fiction in depth, about its construction, about its background behind, and it's about the literary theory things, and the understanding, and the culture thing. And another reason is because all the story was happening in London, in the UK. And uh, so, I should have write it in English, but I couldn't. Just uh, my English is just not that good enough. But when I was trying to express my um, deep in deep in deeps thoughts uh, about how I created this story, how I created this fiction, I would prefer to use it English, not my mother tongue, but still a kind of uh, my mother tongue of theory. 那一句你要不然你就把那个字幕的时候做上就行不行老师是说那就是我说错了那个spirit是可以的那是精神的意思也可以的那个不是我说的就是精神不是那个灵感那还是有点难度就是总体有点难度不会吧但是我你让我重复
kind of memory of my past, even though I couldn't re even remember what the door number is where I was living. But as I said, all it doesn't matter because all those characters, all those friends were still vivid in my mind and they were never disappearing. No matter where I live, no matter where I used to live, it doesn't matter because all those people and their story and their lives were still in my mind, in my memory. It would, it would be never lasting. You say, you say, you say, Definitely, any kind of um, Chinatown is kind of an imagined community. It's just by um, different ways. For example, I went to Paris and I went to New York, they all have Chinatown as well. And, well, it's actually massive, big Chinatown compared with London ones. London one, this is very small in the central, just one very small corner street with some Chinese restaurant. But uh, in New York, for example, they have massive a uh, kind of a zone. The whole world area is completely Chinese restaurants and Chinese um, um, supermarket and restaurant and everything. They got everything. It's there's no difference between the New York or Chinatown and the actual small town in China at all. So. Um, even though, even though it's all everything in reality, still it's a kind of imagined community, because uh, we all know it's not China, we all know it's in America or in London, so it all happens. The word China is all happens in people's mind, in their imagination. It's a kind of. Um, it is one of the very famous literary um, um, theory um, in the late 20th centuries. I know that. It's quite interesting. Now it's not really up to date, but still that content is there. That's why I said I would prefer to be interviewed in English, because all the thought I have is in English. If I were saying um, in Chinese, I have to translate everything, then that's kind of tricky. Yeah. But only in this kind of way. 我记得你那个刚才我在那化妆的时候你问我有一个什么我说我待会儿回答你我说要不然我就说了你刚才问我一个问题你说什么写什么东西的时候我当时跟你说那个采访我在国内的那个采访我不会回答问题然后你当时后
Uh, but that was not the first fiction uh, I have written. The first fiction is quite interesting. I think for my writing um, history, that's quite interesting. I never remember this, but today by this question, I now I remember. The first ever fiction I write about is I, as a man, as a boy, teenager, same age as me. I, I, I was 12 at that time, but I wrote a, a, a guy um, who is 14 years old. Why 14 years? Because you will know very soon. And he, the, the, I, in the, in the uh, short story, I fell in love with my next, uh, next table a classmate who is a girl and she's very pretty. And not because she's pretty I fell in love with her, but because we had some deep communication or whatever. You could call it soulmate or whatever. <laughs> no. And uh, we communicated very well. and. Uh, so I had some special feeling for her, and I think I was in love with her. But in China, it was it was completely banned. You could not you cannot fall in love before you were eighteen or something. So it was completely destroyed by the by our teacher, high school teacher, uh, middle school teacher at that time. And then I was really sad. So finally, the end of the story is because of that, the girl has to be um, living forced to leave this. Um, middle school where we used to study together and she was sent to another middle school by her parents only because we didn't even touch hands but she she fell in love with me or I fell in love with her or something like that but it, everything it's just uh, you know purely by 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 talking and we never have any uh, physical touch at all but because of that she had to leave uh, the school and uh, change to another school and I, I as a boy a 14 years old boy I feel so confused by this and uh, the title of this short story is a confusing or how do I translate it the completed puzzle <laughs> So that's a story, the first story I write when I was 12. I've never experienced any romantic or, or you know, uh, in emotional um, feeling or, or something like that. But I read this story as my first work. And please note, the first story and the second story, I is always a boy. I don't know why. <laughs> it's kind of a completely fictional thing. That's my, that's why I think I... I really enjoy being a fictional character. Now I'm just creating another female uh, fictitious character, Juliet, as me.